Good morning and welcome to the Daily Download. I'm your host, Dr. Rara Pulley. So glad to be with you on a Wednesday morning. Happy Wednesday, everyone. How you feeling? on a Wednesday morning. We welcome people from the North, from the South, from the East and from the West. And we say, come on and be a part of God's kingdom. People are hungry for kingdom. They're looking for kingdom and don't even know that that's what they're looking for. So we welcome you to the daily download and we welcome you to the kingdom of God. What I love about God's kingdom is that God's kingdom is already inside of you. You ain't got to look over here or look over there or look around there. It's already inside of you. Just wait to come into expression. It's inside of me. It's inside of you. It's inside of all of us. And so we say welcome to the Daily Download. So glad to be with you on a Wednesday morning. Welcome again to the Daily Download. So glad to be with you on a Wednesday morning. Yes, we welcome you. We welcome you regardless of your age, race, or gender. You are welcome to God's kingdom, no matter your educational level, socioeconomic status, or your orientation. You are welcome in God's kingdom. It doesn't matter your criminal background, credit history, or your family dynamic. You are welcome in God's kingdom. And regardless of your challenges, the kingdom welcomes you because we all got challenges challenges. So no matter your physical, mental, or emotional challenges, you are welcome in God's kingdom. I'm inviting you to do me a favor. Tag someone in this post and share it on your page and let them know that you're watching the daily download live with Dr. Dara Pulley and invite them to watch it live with you. Then give me a thumbs up, a high five, a heart once you shared it. Good morning, Carol Hasbrook. Good morning, Shepherd Mother. Good morning, Christ Bootsy. Good morning, Bishop Hector. Happy Wednesday. How y'all feeling on a Wednesday morning? Good morning, Patricia Payne. Good morning, Patricia Supernat. Good morning, Paulette Lucas. Welcome to the daily download. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, April. Good morning, Avis. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Althea. Good morning, Alvita. Welcome to the daily download. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, Dr. Dre. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Denise. Good morning and welcome to the daily download. So glad to be with you on a Wednesday Wednesday morning. Good morning, Shay Shay. Good morning, Sarah. How y'all feeling on a Wednesday morning? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, Deborah Ruffin Dorsey. We are praying with you. Good morning, Queen and Zynga. Good morning, Elaine. How y'all feeling? Happy Wednesday, everyone. And welcome again to the Daily Download. Good morning, Wanda. Good morning, Aldelari Robinson. Good morning, Sean Holmes. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you shared it on your page. Good morning, Brenda Anderson. Good morning, Mother Linda Johnson. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Mother Dorothy Gallup. Good morning, Dar. How y'all feeling on a Wednesday morning? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once once you tag someone in this post and once you shared it on your page. Good morning, Bishop Paulette Zimmerman, Bishop Samuel Zimmerman, Bishop Vince and Elder Marnita Munden. So glad to be with you on a Wednesday morning. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you shared it on your page. Good morning, Bishop Joshua. Good morning, Bishop Tito. Good morning, Bishop D. Walter Rogers Jr. Good morning, Dr. Davina Jones. How you feeling, Tammy? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone this post and once you shared it on your page. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning, Keisha Johnson, Gina Johnson. Good morning, Celeste Johnson. Good morning, Isolita Johnson. Good morning, Vivian Johnson and Vivian Miller. So glad to be with you on a Wednesday morning. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone this post and once you shared it on your page. Good morning again and welcome to the Daily Download. I'm your host, Dr. Dara Pulley, the spiritual leader of today's Church Tampa Bay and the presiding prelate of the Church of the Everlasting Kingdom. And this is the daily download where the Lord daily loads us with benefits. I'm telling you, today is already loaded. It's already jammed. It's already packed with the lessons and the blessings of God. And my heart and my mind are open to receive all the good that God has for me. And I'm praying with you today that your heart and your mind are open and receptive to divine unlimited ideas. 
We're working with the first segment of the daily download using the book Kingdom Principles for Living the Divine Life. And we are focused this week on the kingdom principle of divine provision. And we're praying that principle and seeing that manifested in our lives. So I invite you to take a deep, conscious, cleansing breath. Hold it and release. To breathe in again, hold it and let it go. To inhale fully, completely, totally, absolutely, hold it and slowly exhale. Prosperity is a fountain that flows and breathes. Prosperity is always flowing unless I block it and breathe. I remove all blocks, all barriers, and all boulders, and I allow the flow of my individual, corporate, and collective prosperity and breathe. Prosperity is a fountain that flows from optimal health to harmonious relationships to overflowing wealth. And I visualize and I see that flow of prosperity. Whether you're seeing it as a stream, whether you're seeing it as a river, whether you're seeing it as a fountain with three tears, visualize and see the flow like water of your prosperity and breathe. It is in the name and through the power and in the consciousness of Christ Jesus that it is so and so it is. And so we let it be. Amen and amen. Good morning again and welcome to the daily download. By now, I hope that you tag someone in this post and shared it on your page and let them know that you're a part of the daily download with Dr. Derard Pulley and invite them to watch it live with you. Well, in the book, Kingdom Principles for Living the Divine Life, we are taking it uh, day by day. I got my cup back, but you can't see it. We're on day number 35. My children are on this. They did a picture. This is a Father's Day gift that I received. Amen. So I'm starting early with Father's Day blessings to all the fathers. Uh, day 35 and page number 53. And our subject for the day is don't get it twisted. Sometimes we get things mixed up and confused. And I know that people just kind of throw words around, but I'm inviting you to be conscious of the words that you are saying out of your mouth. Do you hear the words that are coming out of your mouth? Because words are spirit and words are life. Words are your servants and they do what you tell them to do. They follow your instruction. And so it is so important that we are conscious of the words that we say. Well, you know what I mean? No, the universe doesn't know what you mean. It just does what it is that you said. Well, I meant to say, say what you mean and mean what you say. The Bible says, let your yea be yea, which means that when you say yes, mean it. And let your nay be nay. When you say no, mean it. That I don't just throw words around that I am conscious of the words that I'm saying because my words are creating my reality. The Bible says, and the worlds were framed by the word of God. And you are creating your life, your world, your affairs through the words that you are saying out of your mouth. And let me tell you, you can't pray wrong. There's no way to pray wrong. Anytime you're trying to talk to God, anytime God is talking to you, there's no, there's nothing wrong about that but we can pray in a limited way and we can increase the vibrations and the effectiveness of our prayers. The Bible says the effectual, the effectual fervent prayer availeth much. And so it is important that our prayers are effective. The condition of our heart and the words that we say out of our mouths help us to get the most impact from our prayers. Our scripture for today is Psalm 37 and verse number four from the Kingdom Study Bible. And it reads, delight yourself also in the Lord 
and God will give you the desires of your heart. And so we're saying, don't get it twisted today. Pulley point number one, the lowest vibration, the lowest way to pray. Good morning, Dr. Robin. Good morning. Uh, the lowest vibration is to pray about wants. That's the lowest. Again, you can't pray wrong, but that's the lowest vibration of prayer is to pray from a place of want. The Bible says there is no want to them that fear God. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So why are you praying about wants? Wants keep you wanting. They never fulfill you. Don't get it twisted. Stop praying about wants and move to a higher vibration. The wants keep you in the worldly consciousness. All that is in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Wants is a low vibration of prayer that is praying from a worldly perspective. So I'm inviting you to just delete the word want out your vocabulary. Don't get it twisted. Wants have a lower vibration. So I'm inviting you to come to a higher level of consciousness and let go of wants. The Lord is, when you're talking about what you want, that means you forgot the Lord is your shepherd. You forgot Jehovah Roha, your shepherd. So I release and I let go of wants. Wants never satisfy. Wants keep you wanting. Pulley point number two, don't get it twisted. So then the next, it's, it's better, it's improvement is the next place is praying about needs. And that's from a church consciousness where you're praying about your needs. It's better than once. It's a higher vibration, but the church consciousness prays about needs. Why are you praying about needs when the Bible says, my God shall supply all of your needs? according to God's riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Why are you praying about needs when the Bible says your heavenly father already knows that you have need of these things? He says, just like the, the, the flowers of the field, they don't, you know, they don't work, they don't spend, they don't toil, but God takes care of them. God is Jehovah Jireh. It is against the nature of God to see a need and not meet it. So why are you pray? Why is your prayer focused on needs when God is saying, I'm already giving you everything you need? What kind of father is God if God doesn't take care of your needs? Your spiritual, mental, emotional needs are already met. Your financial, your socioeconomic needs are already met. Your educational needs, your vocational needs are already met. Your relationship needs, your social needs are already met. Go and move up my Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Your physiological needs are met. Your, your safety needs are met. Put in the chat line, all my needs are met. Your self-esteem, your love and belonging needs are already met. Your self-actualization needs are already met. All my needs are already met. Sometimes we forget it. So we just say, thank you, God, for meeting all my needs. But why are you begging and pleading and bargaining with God about what you need when God has already promised to supply you? Put that in the chat line. All my needs are met. So I thank God for all of my needs being met. I'm not begging for God. Don't get it twisted. Need, it's better than wants. But the worldly consciousness is a consciousness of wants. The church consciousness is a consciousness of needs. I need this. I need that. I ain't got this. I thank you, God, for meeting all my needs. But there's a higher way to pray. Remember, you can't pray wrong. It's not wrong. But there's praying from the worldly perspective. Pulley point number one is praying about wants. Then there's praying about needs, which is praying from the church consciousness. But there is a higher vibration. There's a higher way to pray. Good morning, Overseer Dale Dennis. And it is to pray about desires. Pulley point number three, the kingdom way to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. The kingdom way to pray. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory is to pray about desires. 
whatsoever things you desire when you pray. We don't even use that word. I'm at a restaurant. I say, I desire a coffee with a vanilla cream. And it's like, desire? It always freaks people out when I say desire. I desire this desire. <laughs> but the kingdom is about desires. The scripture today say, if I delight myself in the Lord, that God will give me the desires of our heart. Desire is the spirit knocking on your door of your heart, telling you what's available. It is God that works in you, giving you the desires. It is God who works in you both to will and to do of God's good pleasure. And so I'm inviting you to a kingdom consciousness to move to a place of desire, fire and desire. Yes, move to a place of desires. But we're so focused on wants and needs that we never get to the higher place of praise. Zion is calling you to a higher. The spirit is calling you. Jesus is calling you. The universe is calling you to a higher place of praise, a place of desire. What do you desire? That's what the that's what the what the uh, angel came to Solomon and said. What do you desire? You're the king. What do you desire? Is it long life? Is it um, your your enemies destroyed? What is it? And Solomon said, "I desire wisdom that I might be able to lead God's people." What do you desire? You've been so busy trying to make it from paycheck to paycheck and trying to rub two nickels together to make a dime. You've been so busy focusing on needs instead of thanking God for your needs that you've not yet tapped into your desire, your vision, your dream, your aspiration, your desire. Prayer is about desire. Whatsoever things you desire when we pray, and we don't even use that word. I'm inviting you to bring it back. I'm inviting you to bring that word back in your vocabulary and start saying desire and start seeing a difference in your life, a difference in your prayers, a difference in your interactions. So I move from the place of want, which is the world. I move from the place of need, which is the church. And I advance my prayer life to a place of desire, which is the kingdom. Good morning again, and welcome to the Daily Download. So glad to be with you on a Wednesday morning. Happy Wednesday, and welcome to the second segment of the Daily Download. If this is your first time watching the Daily Download, like, follow, and share the Dr. Dorara Pulley page so that you can get notifications of when we're on Facebook Live. If you're one of our regular Kingdom Citizen students of truth, you know what time it is. It's time to press that share button, and by the family member, a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, classmate or church member and let them know that you're watching the daily download live with Dr. Devara Pulley and invite them to watch it live with you. We're using every social media resource that is available to us to get out this kingdom message. So if you're on other social media platforms, find us, follow us, like us, share us, friend us, because we're building our consciousness to Kingdom Television 24-7, 365. And all those other platforms are on the bottom of your ticker. Yes, we are so grateful that today is Wednesday. And at 7.05 on this very same page, we have early morning fresh anointing prayer where we take your prayer request and we agree with you for the good desires of your heart. At 1230, we have the midday moment today with Dr. Davina Jones on her Facebook page. And this evening at 630 p.m., we have the collective consciousness prayer and our kingdom Bible study at seven o'clock p.m. And you can find all of those right here on this page. Also, the Wednesday word with Bishop D. Walter Rogers, Jr. I'm inviting you to increase 2023 conference and holy convocation that will be hosted right here in Tampa, the City of Champions, July uh, the 12th through the 16th. And you can go to cotechincrease.org and that's at uh, USF. Amen. Uh, so you can join us there. Uh, and that information is on our website. If you're not yet registered, tomorrow is the 15th. Amen. To get those final registrations in for Increase 2023 Conference and Holy Convocation. This weekend, this weekend, this Friday, and I haven't yet given this to my staff, so they're going to be like, 
How are we going to put that up? You didn't tell us. Well, this Friday, I'm going to be speaking for the New Birth Fellowship Alliance for their convocation in Philadelphia. This Friday at 12 noon, um, New Birth Fellowship uh, Alliance with Bishop Tito Saunders. I'll be speaking on Friday morning at noon, Friday afternoon. It's at noon, at high noon for their convocation. And so we invite you uh, to be a part of the New Birth Fellowship Alliance uh, this Friday at noon for their convocation. This coming Sunday, which is Father's Day, I'll be speaking at Kingdom Covenant Ministries and Network at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday, and Bishop Hector is our host. So if you're in the Philadelphia area, that join us. If you're in the DMV, the tri-state area, join us on Friday at noon. And if you are in the Baltimore area, the DMV, join us Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m., a special Father's Day service at Kingdom Covenant Ministries and Network, and that is at 2119 Gwyn Oak Avenue in Baltimore. Maryland. So we got a lot of things that are coming up and I'm so glad to have my uh, uh, daily download family be a part of it. Well, we're also uh, developing the Kingdom Study Bible. Like we have the Women's Devotional Bible, the Men's Devotional, the African American Study Bible, um, the Recovery Study Bible. We have all these different types of study Bibles. Well, we are developing the Kingdom Study Bible. And we're taking it book by book, chapter by chapter, and I pray that you're reading verse by verse as we're developing all the commentary for the Kingdom Study Bible. Our goal is to have the Pentateuch, the law done by convocation so people can have that available to them. Well, we're in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 34 and verse number 11. Um, and my subject today is give us us free. How many remember this line? Give us us free. Who can tell me what movie that came from? It's a popular movie. Give us us free. Jeremiah chapter 34 and verse number 11. While you figure that out, I'm going to read the scripture. It says, but afterwards they changed their minds. They captured the slaves that they had freed and enslaved them again. All right, somebody got it. I see you, Tam J. <laughs> Armistead, yes. Yes, give us us free. And that is my subject for this morning. It's about freedom. It's about liberty. And we're getting ready for the Juneteenth celebrations. We're celebrating freedom. We're celebrating liberty. Let me tell you, liberty and freedom was a big part of the Jewish culture. And so now that many people have been taken off into Babylon, but not everybody. There's some people that are in the fortified cities and they say, we ain't leaving. And so their hearts were touched and they were going to let go of their slaves and they were starting to give in their servants, their indentured servants. They were going to let them go, you know, and kind of move and accept that they were going to Babylon. They were now in the 45 fortified cities and they're not going without a fight. And so they let them go. And then they brought them back in bondage. They let the servants go. They let the slaves go. And then they changed their mind, the Bible says, and they enslaved them again. They went back after them and captured them again, put them back in bondage. Now, you know that if you've forgiven somebody and you let it go, stop bringing it up. Stop putting them back in bondage. God has already forgiven you. Forgive yourself and stop putting yourself back in bondage because somebody else brought it back up. Because somebody is still gossiping about it. Because somebody is still talking. Give us us free. The Bible says who the person whom the sun sets free is free indeed to stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bond. Give us us free. So once you set a person free, set them free. Don't go back and get that person back. You set them free. Don't back go back and dig up that stuff. You set them free. Set yourself free. Set them free and do not become enslaved again. You've released the guilt, the shame, the hurt. Let it go. Don't go back and pick it back up. They sing a song in the old church. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. But they changed their mind and went back and got the slaves and enslaved them again. And let me tell you, when you enslave someone else through bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness, you enslave yourself. Pulling point number one, give us us free. 
The reason why they needed to free people because they knew how it felt to be in Egyptian bondage. And when you know how it feels to be bound, you don't have an issue with setting people free. But they forgot that they were in Egyptian bondage. And so that's why they were enslaving people because they forgot their Egyptian bondage. And many times we're holding on to stuff because we forgot that God delivered us out of Egypt, out of the world with a mighty hand, that God delivered us from Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, let my people go. And so what only thing that would cause somebody to enslave people again after you is you forgot that you were a slave in Egypt and that you were in bondage. Give us us free because you were in Egyptian bondage and God delivered you. You didn't dot every eye and they, somebody forgave you. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Give us us free. Amen. And when you remember how bound you were and how God set you free, you don't have an issue with setting other people free. Pulling point, point number two. Give us us free. We're missing seven, Carol, um, uh, in pulling point number two. There was a seven-year law. People were only able to be in bondage. An Israelite was only able to be in bondage for seven years. After seven years, because what put them in bondage was debt, that they owed somebody something or they did something and they had to work it off. The idea was not that you were going to be a slave forever. Can I prophesy to somebody and say, you're not going to be a slave to those bills forever. That there's a seven year law that says that after seven years, whoever was enslaved, you had to set them free. Whatever somebody owed you after seven years, they had to be free. We need to adopt that in the American system because you got people in bondage to bills and bond for years and years and years. But after seven years, they had to be free. That was God's law. And they were not following God's law. They were keeping people in bondage for eight, nine, 10, 20, 30 years. And so give us us free because God said so. The law said so. God said that we can't live our lives in bondage forever. Can I tell somebody you're not going to be bound forever? That there's a law. There is a limit to how long you can be in bondage. There is a limit to how long you can be in captivity. Amen. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. That was a limit. They were in Egypt for 400 years. That was a limit. They were going to be in Babylon for 70 years. There is a limit. There's a limitation on how long you can be bound. So give us us free because God said every seven years, set everybody free. Give everybody a fresh start. Pulling point number three, give us us free because of Babylonian care. Because they did not follow God's law and principle with setting their brothers and their sisters and their siblings free, then they became bound. Babylonian captivity. Why were they being taken in captivity? Because they were not being obedient with setting each other free. And when you hold on to stuff people said and stuff people did and keep bringing this stuff, you take yourself into Babylonian captivity. You take yourself into bondage by holding on to guilt and shame and keep trying to pay people back and throw up in their face what they did. Love keeps no record of wrongs. So I'm going to give us us free because Babylonian captivity, we're being bound again. Why? Because we haven't learned to set people free. We haven't learned to let stuff go. And so we create our own captivity because we will not set people free. Set yourself free. Forgive yourself. Forgive other people. Because when you don't, you create your own Babylon. You create your own captivity. You create being carried off from your promised land, from the promise of optimal health, the promise of harmonious relationship, the promise of overflowing wealth. So set people free, forgive people what they said, what they did. Don't enslave them again. You let it go. But somehow we get mad all over again and we put them back in bondage. Give us us free. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of the daily download. If you've been blessed by today's message, sow a seed, meet a need, boost this post to hundreds of thousands of people to hear what you heard. 
and can experience what you experience today. Yes, we are coming at 7.05 for early morning, fresh anointing prayer, but we're going to agree with you for the desires of your heart. And let me tell you something. God cares about your desires, and we're going to set our desires free today. Amen. And allow them to come into expression. If you're not able to join us for early morning, fresh anointing prayer, I'll be back tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. with another version of the Daily Download. Until then, have a positive and productive day.